What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News, CPN. And um, I'm going to talk about some boxing, of course. Uh, you know, the uh, Chavez and Canelo fight is three weeks away. Um, and I want to break down some stuff that uh, has just happened. Some theories, some scenarios, some possibilities. Um, it's not looking as good as it should be for Chavez Jr. You know, unless things have changed recently, because as of maybe three weeks ago, um, Nacho Berenstein, you know, the classic world renowned trainer of Mexico City, um, he was threatening to leave the camp if Chavez wanted, because Chavez wanted to leave the camp, you know, and it's some classic Chavez, should I say Chavez Jr.? Junior wanted to leave the camp and Nacho, you know, put his foot down and pulled rank and then, you know, just informed him like, hey, if you leave, I'm leaving, you know, and um, I and I guess that what, you know, and it, you could look at it so many different ways in regards of how Chavez's demeanor was, you know, a lot of people could say, well, hey, he wanted to leave camp. What's up with that? You know, and, and you know, that why would you want to leave camp? And it makes sense, like you're in the middle of camp why would you just up and want to leave right now but <clears throat> in his defense he didn't leave camp because of the influence of Nacho Berenstein you know um so yeah he could have left anyway and lost the help of Nacho Berenstein right but he didn't do that and uh he stayed so you know that tells you that Nacho Berenstein you know with his um influence has a lot of pull you know, because Chavez Jr. is, you know, he's known to do a lot of stuff. So I think that his temperament broke for just a short bit of time. But I also think that uh, he's learning as a fighter. He's learning um, patience, you know, and I think he lacks patience. You know, I mean, he's, he's a wild cannon, you know. Um, but Chav Canelo looks very strong. You know what I mean? He looks strong. He looks big. He looks he looks like how he should look. You know what I mean? Not saying that he looks itty bitty, but it has to be more for his advantage if he doesn't have to cut weight like he stated, you know, because I was reading one of his articles and um, he doesn't have to cut weight. And so he can eat properly and not starch himself. So he will have the fluid and the strength and he will fill up to that weight because he's supposed to have been at that weight like a lot of people felt. Anyway, um, the fight will be a good fight because he is a bigger guy, but um, I like Canelo's boxing ability. I like his fighting style. I love his combinations, you know, um, but I still am rooting for Chavez Jr. Not saying he will win, but... <clears throat> One thing that Chavez has, he has his size, he has the name, he has the legacy behind the name, but that also comes with pressure too, right? But he also has um, Memo Heredia, right? Now, if you can remember the last time Nacho Berenstein and Memo Heredia got together, um, Marquez was knocking out Manny Pacquiao in the sixth round in two minutes and 59 seconds, so... You know, this could be a classic fight, you know, a perfect combination of guys that get together to train this guy and turn him into a beast, turn him into a machine, you know, to execute the job. You know what I'm saying? So that could be the possibility. So that's a good thing. The combination that he has the training camp. All he has to do is have the desire. And then, you know, he, you know, hearing stuff like he wanted to leave camp is not really gratifying. You know, that's not really a good thing, but. You know, the thing is, he didn't leave. So nothing really, not, you know, people argue all the time in training camp. So, you know, um, Chavez Jr. might come in, you know, um, uh, in, on weight. But everyone thinks that because he comes in overweight, let's say he doesn't make the 164.5 limit. That doesn't mean the fight won't happen. What that will mean is, <clears throat> let's say he comes in at 166.5. Well, that's 2.5 million, right? Um, no, that's 2 million. So um, he'll pay $2 million, but at the result of coming in a lot bigger, 
Look at Danny Jacobs, right? Danny Jacobs did the same thing. You know, he used the rules. He didn't, you know, he didn't, you know, he lost the um, the chance to win one of the belts. But, I mean, he was, I don't think he was fighting for that belt anyway. He was fighting to win. So if Chavez Jr. can come in, and he does come in overweight, I mean, he's getting, what, $6 million for the fight. Well, if he comes in three pounds overweight, which is not necessarily out of the question because he has no business fighting at that weight anyway. You know, he's a naturally 168 pounder, you know, and then, or he'll make, he'll pay 3.5 million if he comes in at a full 168. Who cares if he wins, right? Because if he wins, he'll still clear, you know, over $3 million. You know, that's pretty much a Mayweather case, you know, um, or, or a Mayweather purse, jackpot, right? When, when a, when a, a B minus fighter fights Mayweather, he gets around that much or a Manny Pacquiao gets about 3 million, 4 million, right? So, and then he comes in with that size advantage and he can really put it to Canelo and work the body and, you know, start off with his combinations. They're both flat footed. I think that Canelo has the better footwork between the two, but they both have cement feet. You know, Canelo just knows his flaws and I think he's really trying to work on his flaws. I've seen a little bit of that in the Cotto fight. You know, he was really, um, I, I've seen some improvement in his footwork. So, um, you know, speaking of Mayweather coming in overweight, he knows about that too. Um, he was scheduled to fight Juan Manuel Marquez when they met, you know, on their date, uh, back in 09. He's, he comes in, he's, they were supposed to meet at 144. He comes in at 146. So he had to pay, um, Juan Manuel Marquez $600,000 just to come in. But who cares? You know, six, it's six hundred thousand dollars compared to a purse. It's just a purse. It's just money that you don't see. You know, for a victory. But what happened as a result? Floyd Mayweather came in that fight bigger, stronger, quicker. And who said now? Not to say that he wouldn't bigger, stronger, and quicker anyway. But you know, it was only an advantage, and you can see the the work rate that he was able to do when without starching himself to one forty four. You know, because if he learned anything and I, I know Mayweather was was looking at the um, the example of the De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao fight because De La Hoya starched himself to get to 145 to fight uh, Manny Pacquiao and he got annihilated. So, you know, he was like, well, screw it. Why would I do that? I'd rather pay the penalty and then come in with the weight advantage than to starch myself and then come into the ring 24 hours later as a week or the next day as a weaker fighter. So, you know, saying all that to say this about Chavez, you know, weight gain is good, especially when you don't have to start yourself to make weight. If weight's against you and you know you're the naturally bigger guy, you know, it advantages you to pay the penalty and come in, you know, with the advantage. You know, there's a reason why it's a weight advantage, you know what I mean? There's a reason why they want to meet at a certain weight class, you know, to cut down advantages, you know. And, you know, saying all that, that should be, and then if that happens, you know, it, 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 it would be a good thing for Chavez Jr. And he can pull up an offset, upset, you know. Um, and I would love to see Chavez win simply because I, I don't think Chavez, he's been spoiled. He's a son of a legend. There's this, you know, he was born rich pretty much. You know, he had money. He knew that he knows about the finer things in life being from Mexico. And it's kind of hard to really motivate yourself, you know, get the momentum, you know what I'm saying, to um, do these things. I mean, he was undefeated for a long time until he stepped in there mm -hmm. with uh, Sergio Martinez. And, you know, and he lost that fight. But look what happened in that fight, you know. And then after that fight, within that fight with Fonfora, you know, that, that really kind of, you know, um, that really kind of put a monkey in his wrench. However... You know, I think he has something to prove and it's not really about money at all because he agreed to everything, you know. But where I'm getting at is if he wins, if Chavez wins, he won't pull the diva card. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm afraid if Canelo wins this fight, which more than likely he will, but it, when or if he does, he will take an approach unlike Muhammad Ali, but more like Floyd Mayweather Jr., Meaning, you look at all these negotiations. 
with the Golovkin fight, you know, and the approach that he approaches, he approaches it like a diva, like a kingpin, you know, he hides behind the numbers, he hides behind, you know, the, um, the fame of being the number one star, you know, instead of fighting the fights that people want to see, he would rather have an attitude like, hey, I'll fight him when I want to, not when someone wants me to, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm afraid if that happens, if he, when he, if, if he beats Chavez Jr., the, that fight probably won't be made until Golovkin really does, it has less and less of a chance to beat Canelo Alvarez, you know, so if it doesn't happen in September, you know, something else will come up and he'll fight someone else that you don't really even know about, you know what I mean, so, um, whereas Muhammad Ali would have fought him right away. You know, that's that's champion legacy standards. That's what real champions do. That's what people remember. Floyd Mayweather will say, well, hey, I'll, I'll fight him when I want to. You know, and it's like, no, fight him now when he's freaking 35. He's 35 years old. That fight should have happened last year, but it's more of what I'm talking about. You know, when you, everyone wants to be like Mayweather Jr. But no one wants to be like Muhammad Ali now. And that's the problem. You know, they're following the wrong example in the sport of boxing. You want to fight the best. You know, and at first, Canelo was like that. He wanted to fight all the best fights, especially after the loss to Mayweather. You know, but somewhere down the line, I think the Lara fight did it. I think that when he fought Lara, I think inevitably he did not want to fight those guys that, you know, gave him trouble like Lara did. You know, but... You know, Lara is an example of a person. You know, he's another example. If he dared to be great, he should have signed that contract or he should have got his managers to sign that contract to fight Golovkin, which he didn't do. He talked about fighting Golovkin. No contract was ever submitted or forwarded to the Golovkin camp in regards of Lara. Now, imagine if Lara wanted to fight Golovkin. He fights Golovkin and beats Golovkin on an upset because that's what it would be and he uses his feet his, you know, his distance, his timing speed, he uses that. Golovkin has his own timing speed, but Lara is a slick fighter and is a southpaw. And if we know anything about uh, Golovkin now, he has a problem with movers. So that would have been right up Lara's alley. But if Lara dared to be great, he would have took that fight because it, he, would have, he could have intervened and intercepted that fight with Canelo if he really wanted Canelo again. You know, and I think think I think he won. I think he beat Canelo, but it was a close fight at the end of the day. It's your perception of who you think won with the punches that they chose and the arsenal that they choose chose to use in the ring. You know, do you like the boxing ability or you like the body punches from Canelo? You know, um, so again, none of these guys, you know, are following legacy examples. And that's the problem we have in boxing. But I think Chavez Jr. will. Because if Chavez Jr. wins, it will be a Chavez. It, or if not, it'll probably be a rematch between Canelo because I believe he has a rematch clause. However, that doesn't mean necessarily he'd have to fight him right away. He, You know, if, uh, if that Golovkin fight came to the table, I see Chavez Jr. I see him getting taking that Golovkin fight. Because that, that, that's on his um, radar, those two fights. Canelo Golovkin and he stated that and you know he's fighting Canelo if he beats Canelo he wants to fight Golovkin and that would be a war but both fights this is a treat you know I mean this fight here because you got the bigger guy good big guy against a little bigger little big guy or a little good guy right versus a, a good big guy and they're both have cement feet so they're not going to do a lot of running you know, so when you got guys that have refused to go anywhere and they want to oppose each other's will, you're going to see a war. And that's what you're going to see, a war of will. A lot of body punches, a lot of uppercuts, a lot of hooks is going to be an extravaganza and I can't wait to see it. But anyway, this is just me wrapping up, you know, my takes on um, the new news about Chavez and Canelo Alvarez. But stay tuned. This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News and you guys have been counterpunched. Peace.